Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Lehman from Math with Mrs. Lehman and I'm excited to start a new playlist of quick review questions. Uh, what I'll be doing in this series of videos is going through released questions from state tests past for grade six. So um, the goal is that these, these little clips are going to be fairly short, you know, maybe five to 10 minutes and they will go through questions that were actually on New York state tests in in the past, like I said. So um, here we go. For today, we're going to look at questions, some questions from 2018. So um, an equation is shown below and it says 12 minus nine plus C equals 12. So this question um, has a few different skills here. It says what value of C makes the equation true? So the first skill you need to know is how to combine like terms in this case they gave you numbers, 12 minus nine plus C equals 12. So 12 minus nine, we know that's three. So three plus C equals 12. So this is really also a review on how to solve a one-step equation. Okay, so we need to get the C isolated, so we're going to get rid of that. So instead of adding the three, we're going to subtract the three. That would leave us just with C on this left side and 12 minus three is nine. So we know C has to equal nine. Choice C, actually. Um, and then another way you could do this is plug in the values. So uh, we could look at this and say 12 minus nine plus zero, does that equal 12? Well, that gives you three plus zero. Three plus zero does not equal 12. So we know that is a bad answer. Uh, if you tried choice B, 12 minus nine plus three, so 12 minus 9 is 3 plus 3. Does that equal 12? No, it does not. That does not equal 12. You'd get 6. Okay? So the last one, if you did 12 minus 9 plus 12, you would get 3 plus 12. Does that equal 12? Well, 15 does not equal 12. So the only answer that would work is 9. All right? So that's question number one on this example. Kate has a coin collection. She keeps seven of the coins in a box, which is only 5% of her entire collection. Uh, it says, what is the total number of coins in Kate's collection? So we have a part to whole relationship here. We have seven out of an unknown number, and we know that's 5%. We know percents are out of 100. So we're gonna write that ratio, seven, out of an unknown number equals 5% out of 100%, right? So um, this would go back to, I'm gonna write this in blue, part over whole equals percent out of 100. This proportion setup we learned at the beginning of the year in module one, or you could do is over of equals percent out of 100 as well. So, um, and you'll see right here, of the coins in a box. So that's the un, unknown part of that. All right, so you're looking for the connection here. We're trying to get from seven to five and figure out how that will scale up. Well, you'll notice immediately that doesn't really work very well. So you need to simplify this, okay? We're gonna simplify it to one over 20 because they're both divisible by five. So I'm gonna actually work going to the left here. So one, times seven gives us seven, 20 times seven gives us 140. So we know that she has 140 total coins, okay? Uh, number three says, what is the greatest common factor of 36 and 90? So you have a few options. We could do a factor tree with prime factorization, or we could do the little t-chart of factors. So um, let's do the t-chart. So 36, 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9 are all um, sets of factors that would multiply to give you 36. For 90, we're going to have 1 times 90, 2 times 45, 3 times 30, 4 doesn't go into it, 5, so if you take 90, Divide it by five, you're gonna get this, bring down to zero. You're gonna get 18 times. Um, six won't go into it. 
Um, let's see, seven, no, eight, no, nine wood, nine times 10, okay? The concern with doing the T-chart is that you may miss some factors, but we're looking for the greatest common factor of the two. So I would start on the right-hand side here. Um, 36 is not shared, 18 right here is shared. So 18 is the greatest common factor. Right? A lot of kids miss this question because they did, um, you know, different things. They, they missed the GCF completely. Maybe they tried to do LCM um, and they did uh, 180 by accident. But anyway, question four says, all of the students in the sixth grade either purchased their lunch or brought their lunch from home on Monday. It says 24% of the students purchased their lunch and 190 students brought their lunch from home. How many students are in the sixth grade? All right, so you gotta start with what you know. So we know 24% purchased their lunch, but then they give us the number who brought their lunch. So we've got purchased and we got brought. Those two numbers, or those two categories don't match. So what we're gonna use is we know that 24% purchased their lunch so that means the other part out of 100% brought their lunch. So if you take 100% and you subtract 24%, you're gonna get 76% that brought their lunch. So 76% brought, All right? So this question um, needs you to understand that percents are out of 100 and we have 24 that purchased, so therefore 76 did not purchase. So now we need a proportion. So if we are doing um, percents, we know percents are out of 100. We know 76% out of 100 brought their lunch. We know that, so this is people who brought. So on top, we want to put the 190. We don't want to put it on the bottom because that would be the total number of kids. 100% of the kids would mean all the kids who bought and brought. All right, so again, you're gonna look at this and you're looking for the connection between 76 and 190. So, you know, probably you're going, I don't know how, how many times 76 is gonna go into 190. So one thing you can do is, um, in sixth grade, any way it works, you simplify this fraction. So you're gonna get 38 over, um, I'm sorry, I'm dividing by two here. 100 divided by two is 50. So that would be one way. Well, does 38 go into 190? Let's see. So 38 times 5, that gives you 40, 30, that, 15, 19. Yeah, so it goes in 5 times. So 38 times 5 would be how we get from um, 38 to 190. So 50 times 5 is going to be 250 kids. Now, if we did this correctly, if we take 250, and we multiply it by the 76%, we should get 190. So six times zero is zero, six times five is 30, carry your three, six times two is 12, plus three is 15. Bring down your zero, seven times zero is zero, seven times five is 35, seven times two is 14, plus three is 17. Add those up. You're gonna get zero, zero, 10, carry your one, nine, one, nine, zero, zero, zero. Don't forget, you have two spots here, so you gotta move in two spots. So we did that correctly. 190 kids brought their lunch out of a total of 250, all right? So that one was really not that difficult as long as you know how to simplify a fraction, find that connection with a proportion, and you need to know that percents are out of 100. All right, so let's go to the next page which is apparently here. All right, the relationship between Robert's age and Julia's age can be represented by the equation below. So if you take Robert's age, that's the same as taking Julia's age and adding three to it. So Julia plus three equals Robert. Which table of values represents the relationship between Rover's age? <laughs> Who's Rover? That should say Robert's. I don't know what happened there really funny. All right, so uh, Robert's age and Julia's age. Uh, so what you want to do is make sure that it works all of the time because I am going to guess, well maybe I'm wrong. All right, um, 
a lot of times what they'll do is they'll have like the equation work for the first few rows and then like kids don't check all the way down and it doesn't work the whole way but they've already picked their answer and moved on to the, the next question so we're going to take julia's age we got to add three to it so take this in this first example julia's age plus three to get this other number so 12 plus three does that give you nine no all right we know robert's older because we got to take his uh, is that a sister i don't assume they're a brother and sister but you're going to take Julia's age, add three to get Robert. So three plus three does not give you nine. That's not gonna work either. All right, Julia's age. Wow, if you divide it by three, so that's all sorts of wrong. That would be choice D. The correct answer is gonna be choice C because look, if you take six plus three, you're gonna get nine. All right, if you take 12 plus three, you're gonna get 15. And if you take 18 plus three, you're going to get 21. So. Um, thank you for watching. I know I'm moving at a quick pace with this. I tried to keep it under 10 minutes. I'm at 11 right now. So anyway, stay tuned. I'm going to try to do one of these a day. We'll see how it goes at least a few times a week anyway. So, all right. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.